Welcome and Dobro Doshli. This week we are making pie and picking a whole lot of things. In fact, the garden is really starting to produce quite a lot of fruit. Bok, I'm Mandio. This is Grow, Make, Cook and welcome to my garden. I grew up in Australia in a permaculture family, but after we got married, Mr O and I moved here to his home country of Croatia. I am a passionate and hands-on homemaker and gardener, and I love life's simple pleasures. So join me on my journey, and together we can learn to grow, make, and cook. With summer fast approaching, the joys of having lots of produce ripening fills the third week of June, or Lipan. Sometimes I really love just the process of making your own bread. I just, there is just so much about it that is lovely. The sticky, stretchy dough, it's just wonderful. This is part of the almost meditation that is making things at home. When you buy a loaf, you just don't get this. Ah, I love the smell of a fresh baked loaf, don't you? This year has been terrible for pests. We've lost the first two sowings of my squash, almost everything. And now my chamomile, which is for tea, has just been absolutely smothered in aphids. So, I got this tip from a friend of mine here to put a tiny bit of milk in your water and to pour that over all of the aphids and hopefully that will make them a little bit sick, weak and then prone to predation. This is a job I'm absolutely loving at the moment, is picking the last of our tiny little alpine strawberries. So the season for these tiny treats is quite short and so their cultivated cousins are just starting to come in but these ones are ending. So that I can make jam later on in the summer with lots of different fruits, I'm going to freeze these and then later I'm going to collect blackberries, which are only just in flower now, and black currants, which are not yet ripe. And by freezing some of my fruit now, I can have a mixed berry jam later in summer. Our blackberry blossoms are never going to win a prize for best bloom, but they certainly have won over the bees. On a typical year, this is a really common pastime. We spend a huge amount of time picking more cherries than we can possibly eat. But this year, the pickings are paltry, if I'm going to be honest. All the spring storms and late frosts have meant that we have almost no cherries and no plums this year. And that's it. That one small bowl of cherries is every sour cherry I could pick from all of our sour cherry trees. Pathetic, really. I mean, they're good looking cherries, but this is not even going to be enough to make one cherry pie. I'm going to have to blend it with other things.
So this year, to make up for the lack of having any sweet cherries, I'm picking some of my little alpine strawberries and some of the larger ones too. And this, I'm hoping, will counterbalance the tartness of the sour cherries and um, hopefully actually fill up the pie. <laughs> The first step is to rinse the strawberries and the cherries. The next step is getting your fruit into a frying pan. That means chopping up your strawberries and pitting and chopping your cherries. Oh, ah, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> This really does squirt everywhere. It can get quite messy. Now, we have made cherry pie every year here. It's kind of a tradition, really. Um, but this year's poor harvest means we've got to change things up a little. So the next step is then to add a little bit of butter just to stop it sticking. While that's simmering away, I'm going to start the dough. First thing for my pastry I have is about a cup and a half of flour. Chop and melt some butter. I've got half of a 250 gram block. Then to my melted butter, I'm adding two teaspoons worth of vanilla sugar. If you're using vanilla essence, this is just a few drops. Now I add my vanilla sugar and butter mixed together into my flour. Those two teaspoons of sugar in my vanilla sugar are the only sugar I add to this entire recipe. So it's not quite as sweet as you would think for most pies. Now flick your oven on at 180C or about 350 Fahrenheit. Now that it's nicely combined, start adding cold water, just a teaspoon at a time, and let it really mix in before adding more. You're trying to get this to a doughy consistency. Once the dough is sticky, roll it into a rough ball and then pop it into the fridge to cool. Getting back to the sauce, remember to stir regularly and once it gets to this point where there's a lot of liquid in the pan, turn the heat right down and let it simmer gently. I don't normally use a bulking agent for my cherry pie, but because we've had so little fruit, I'm going to have to use some apple just to give some depth to my pie. All I'm going to do is peel and chop the fruit. Apples don't exude too much moisture, and so I'm not going to worry about cooking it down. By now, your filling for the pie should be nice and thick and chunky. Remember to stir it so that it doesn't stick. The butter can't do all the work. Now, flour your working surface well before squishing out your dough, which should now be cold, and then rolling out until it's reasonably thin and bigger than your pie dish. This dough is really crumbly and it falls apart a bit. So I always end up lifting this with an egg flip first and then transferring it very carefully into my pie dish. It will tear a bit. Press the tearing pastry into your pie dish. 
Then pop the apple and then the cherry filling into the pie crust. I like to just use a knife to lean the edges in. If you want a lid for your pie, make double the amount of pastry and then just roll out the second half and lay it on top. Bake for 40 to 50 minutes until the pastry is golden. Have you ever noticed the beauty of the flower from a potato or maybe from a radish? I hope this week, wherever you are, you find yourself smiling at something beautiful. Please like and subscribe if you like the video and until next time, Dovigenia!